Right. So, um, this is a Pi Zero, just a little 3D case I printed off, um, which came out free with a Mag Pi just before Christmas. Um, it's, it's, it's a very rare beastie to buy, but if we could buy it, it only costs four pounds. Now, you know, I, I mean, I like that sort of price. May have always thought, you know, $25 is far, far too expensive for a computer. And to get one for four quid is much more um, what I'm interested in. Um, it doesn't come with the pins on it. So at the moment, it, it's no good. You can't just go and buy one and use one without being able to solder up 26 pins. And that's not really the first bit of soldering you ever want to attempt in your life. Where's Karis gone? Yeah, I practice on a few other things first yeah. before you try and do that. <laughs> uh, it's just because, you know, it's, it's the, the, they're close together and um, just needs a little bit more. But, um, it came out great, and for four quid means you can just use these pies anywhere you want. I've got one outside in the garden um, with a Wi-Fi dongle in, uh, with an infrared LED pointing at, a, at an RGB lamp. And now I've got my old garden lighting up as if it was the Houses of Parliament, but well, not quite, it's only a 10 watt lamp. But it lighting up, controlled by my pie, so I can change the colour to whatever I want, I'll get it to follow the cheer lights colour. Um, I've got one in the kitchen, um, control the lights in the kitchen. Anyway, great. So that's the idea of this, or so it would seem when it first came out, that it, you'd, you'd get a proper pie, you'd write your programme, but then if you wanted to um, deploy the project, you didn't really want to send your pie to out there at the cost of 30 quid, for four quid, plus an SD card, maybe plus a Wi-Fi adapter, maybe 12 quid altogether, you could then deploy your project. And it becomes a lot more affordable to do that. Um, one of the things that came across on this was it had micro USB port. And in technical terms, I call it an OTG, which I found that meant on the go, is it? Is that what it means? On the go. Yeah. And it's basically what your phone will do. You know, a previous Pi is the USB was just the keyboards and mice and Wi-Fi dongles. You couldn't um, connect you couldn't make it appear to be a, uh, a USB drive or anything like that. It just physically wasn't possible due to the way it's wired. But because of cheapness, um, it, it sort of goes straight through from that USB into the chip. And it means you can use it as a USB mass storage, which you might think, well, why don't you just buy a pen drive? It seems a bit silly to do that. But one of the things is, as well, as well as that, you could turn it into a MIDI device, I believe. But the thing I'm interested in is that you could network it over USB. And if you can network it over USB, then you can power it over USB. So I can plug this into my laptop and treat it like a USB device. Like you can with a code bug or a crumble, where you just plug it in and you can program it from your PC. Um, you could do the same with this, but it's a Pi, so it's got a lot more power in it and a lot more possibilities. Anyway, it was just for geeks when it first started. It was someone who noticed the fact that you plugged it in without an SD card, it appeared on your PC as an unknown device. So they've hacked away at the kernel, which is the real engine bits of any Linux operating system, and made it so you can turn it into a networking device. Um, I couldn't follow the instructions, but luckily Andrew from Northern Ireland, GBA man one, um, he managed to translate the geek instruction to something that I could understand, and then I've hopefully translated it into something that anyone could understand. And I produced an actual image that you could just download and plug in, just like you can do Raspbian. Uh, you can just go onto the website and download the image. You can either download it by a Dropbox or you can use a torrent and just plug it in and try it. If you have a pan, we think we've got a Pi Zero. Just look it up. Oh, about half of you. Right, so that's good. So you can give this a go. So you plug your SD card in. Nothing else in there, my lord. Um, and I come along to my computer. And I'll just reset this back to what it is. Oh, good, it's all crashed out of it anyway. And you plug it in. Hopefully not knocking your very delicate HDMI connector. Mm -hmm. Awkward. Doesn't matter if it bounces around the room a bit. 
And I'll just put this add on board on, because otherwise there'll be nothing to show. Yeah, I think that's right. So there we are, so you plug it in, it went beep, it says installing driver software. Shouldn't really do that, but I'll probably put it in a different USB socket than I did before, which would be a bit of a shame. Don't know whether to take it out now or start again. I don't know if you've noticed this, when you plug things uh, into different USB sockets, PCs tend to want to install the driver again, even though all you've done is move USB sockets. So never mind. So when you plug it in the first time, to a USB software you haven't used before, it'll say it was not successfully installed because it's never heard of a Pi USB networking device. So this is once per USB port. Yeah. And if you go in, you'll see this thing that says in your device manager, RNDIS Ethernet adapter, and you think, wow. Basically, you just need to follow the instructions on the internet, and I will quickly whisk through them just to show you. So update the driver software. Browse my computer. Let me pick from a list of devices. Go down. Find network adapters. Wait until it comes up with this list. Get down to Microsoft, but choose Microsoft Corporation, and pick the second one. And then click yes. So this is not recommended, but I think that's quite cute that, that it's not recommended even though it's a Microsoft Corporation. Oh, it's decided you already had it anyway, so therefore it did. The advantage is now, as you can see, the yellow marks disappeared, and you've now got this network adapter, RMDIS <laughs> Ethernet Gadget 3. Just shows it must be the third time I've plugged this in. That's just a one-off operation per computer that you do. Um, now the advantage is now, is that that Pi is now networked to the PC via USB. Can I just have a question on that? Yes. That for just Windows 7, is it same? That was Windows 7, very similar to Windows 10, it's slightly different with a Mac or a Linux. So is it the same, so is it the same operation, essentially the same It's the same operation. Windows 7, 8, 10. Yeah, you need to just That's enable it. USB networking on your main machine, right? XP. Sorry? XP. I don't know if it works on XP, but even I don't support XP anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I do Windows 98 still because I like it, but not XP. No, Windows 3.11 with WinSock. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine on the Windows. That was a good one. Yeah, Windows 3.11 was fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
when green flag is clicked, let us, obviously this is for people who are familiar with the program here, uh, new, in 11 on, let's do one there, new, in 11 off, uh, obviously we're struggling here, but it just shows you can still do it, even on a tiny screen. So there it is, it's a proper pie running Scratch GPIO. Sorry for the poor screen size, but luckily in this case it doesn't matter. Right? So you could do that. So if you could get the pins soldered onto a Pi Zero, um, you've got yourself a four quid computer as opposed to the cheapest other one, which would be 16 quid for a Model A. So I think that's, that's quite worthwhile having. But, what might be the advantage is not to VNC into it like this, although that's one of the options. It's just to run a program on your Pi and then run the main program on your PC. We're even looking to see whether we can do it on an iPad, but we're not getting very far at the moment. Um, but it gives us another possibility. The possibility of using this now instead of a code book or a crumble or a micro bit. And it's cheaper, you know. Uh, Four quid for a, a Pi Zero, two pound for an SD card, that's six pounds. So that is cheaper than all of those other devices. But you've got the power of a Pi here, and you could program it to control the robot and then unplug it and set it away. So uh, it's very interesting. Like I say, it's all a bit bleeding edge at the moment and the geeks are all working. I'm just the last chain here trying to get it out to people so you can use it. Um, so you can just click and use it like this. But. Uh, might be very interesting in another way to use a pie and might make these very useful devices.